Welcome back, folks. Kind of sucks when you have to wait for the beginning of the video like that, right? If you're one of the beauties who's already subscribed, obviously you know I'm talking about my month-long hiatus that I just finally published a video. I apologize, it's not gonna happen again. If you're new here, if this is the first video you're watching, that's a terrible way to start. I post, I like to think, relatively frequently, and that's not the first impression I wanna make with you guys. So, why don't you hit that subscribe button, and I'll show you guys how often I publish videos. Not gonna take a month off in between. Today, we're talking about 3D photos. Super simple, you don't need to buy any new equipment, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Now, a buddy of mine, Zach, takes these photos all the time on a super cool camera called the Nishika N8000. Now, like I said, you can use all the equipment you have to replicate something like this. It's not gonna be the exact same, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. The Nishika camera is pretty cool, actually. It has four different lenses, sort of off-centered from each other, so that when you take the photo, it's taking a photo of your subject from four slightly different angles, and then what you can do with those four photos is overlay them into a GIF or a little movie, and you can show like a little bit of parallax motion, as you guys saw. The pros to this camera are, you press the shutter button once and it takes the four photos and you can technically like freeze time and create like a little mini matrix effect. The cons, to find one nowadays, it's probably around a thousand bucks and that's quite of a hefty asking price for a camera that really only does one thing. Also, it's a film camera so if you're not acclimated to film or you're not comfortable using film, it might be a little bit tougher for you. Not as much flexibility as your DSLR would have which is why I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it with your camera, fully digital, and you're gonna make some dope photos that I better see. Old subscribers, new subscribers, I wanna see you tag me in them, got it? Otherwise, I'm not gonna show you. Well, I mean, technically I am gonna show you. You can just completely ignore what I said and just watch the tutorial. I don't know. That was an empty threat, Daniel. So, considering we don't have the camera that'll take four photos at once, we're gonna have to take those four photos in that semicircular fashion, and it's pretty simple to do. It is gonna require a little bit of a learning curve, a little bit of adjustments. You might have to take the, you know, that one photo three or four times to get the angles that you like. To be honest, I picked it up in like the first three or four shots, and I'm confident you guys can do it too. The first thing you're going to want to do is set your camera to a high speed mode. So my 1DX has a high speed mode, it takes like 24 frames per second. It's really cool, you don't need 24 frames, so don't worry. Set it to the highest repeat shutter, whatever it's called, constant shutter. Whatever mode that is called on your camera, set it to that. That's the first step. Now. You're gonna need a subject for it. I find that this technique works best with like portraits or if you can find someone to model for you or like a cool object in the foreground with that shallow depth of field background. That looks the best, you get that cool motion. It doesn't really work well for landscapes because the landscape's so far away you don't really notice that semicircular movement. Here's the trick. You're gonna need to get that person to stay as still as possible to replicate the effect. If they're moving during the shot, or even like the slightest little bit of movement, it's gonna kind of throw it off. It kind of looks like a really low frames per second video, like you're shooting a video at like 12 frames per second. It looks a little choppy, doesn't look quite right. So you need them to stay as still as possible. So you've set your camera to high speed mode, you've got your model standing as still as possible, the next thing you're gonna do is start shooting. The technique behind it is this. You're gonna create a small semicircle as you're holding that shutter down. You can repeat this process as many times as you need. The trick is to focus on keeping your subject as centered in the frame as possible, or however, however you want to frame it, try to stay as consistent with that framing as possible. If you're shaking all around, the effect is gonna get lost. So you kinda wanna keep your subject right dead center as you make this small, tight semicircle with your camera. You don't want a huge semicircle while you're going because first of all, it's gonna be way too hard and you're gonna be like flailing around to try and get this in the center. It's gonna be super hard to keep them centered and regardless of how fast or slow your shutter goes on your camera, the gap between each shot is too big. So it looks choppy. It doesn't really give you that 3D effect. More so of like, I took four pictures from four different spots effect. Keep it nice and tight, nice and smooth and hold that shutter button down. You might end up taking like five, six, seven photos during that little semicircle, and that's fine. 
you don't have to worry about that. It really doesn't matter if you take too many photos, because what we're gonna do when we get it into post is take the four best photos. What I find is when I'm doing that semicircle, I usually end up with about six or seven photos, and then I take the four photos in the middle of that range. I find that from start to finish, the, the motion is a little too much, but in that middle range is when it's easiest to get your subject in focus and framed properly and not moving too much in any direction. So those four middle frames, let's say, are what we're gonna take into post. And speaking of post, let's head over to the computer and get her done. All right, so you've uploaded your photos to your computer. We've picked the four that we like. What you're gonna do next is import them into Photoshop. Now, I wouldn't edit them or color grade them in any way yet because the first thing that's more important is the orientation. If you do wanna use Lightroom to color grade prior to putting it in Photoshop, that's fine. Just make sure that all four are the same. Because you're playing them back so close together and at such a short frame rate, you're gonna notice a change. If one is cooler or warmer, or if you change the tones in one, you're gonna notice that change and it's gonna throw off the whole effect and people will be out of it. Instead of appreciating that subtle 3D movement, they're too focused on, why did the third frame change color? And you just, rookie mistake. Once you got your four photos in Photoshop, whoa, that is a tongue twister. Four photos in Photoshop, four photos in Photoshop. Say that 10 times fast. I'll even let you pause this video, then you try it. And then if you did it, comment down below that you were able to do that. Four photos in Photoshop. You've got your four photos in Photoshop. You're gonna create a new document based on the size that you wanna use. So for example, let's say we wanna throw this on Instagram. We're gonna go with a four by five ratio. Let's say 800 pixels by 1,000 pixels. We've got that blank document. One by one, you're gonna import each of the photos you took in sequential order. So one, two, three, four. That's your order because you're gonna to have to make sure that that movement lines up. So the first photo, Frame it the way you want it, that is your base. After you've got that first photo framed up, import your second photo, lower the opacity of this photo to like 60, 70%, just enough so that you can see the photo underneath, but you can still tell what you're doing. Now using the transform tool, you're gonna move this around and get your subject to line up as closely as possible. If you're using a static object, try and line up the whole object. If you're using or working with a model, try and line up something like the eyes or the focal point of the photo. Line them up as best you can. Repeat this process for the third and fourth photo. Once you've done all four photos, you're gonna save each individually as a JPEG, and we're gonna move this into Premiere to wrap this up. We're almost done, super dope, super easy, and you're gonna create some awesome effects. Premiere time. Alrighty, we're in Premiere. We've imported our photos. What we have to do now is create a sequence that matches the size of the photos. So we saved them to 800 by 1000. We're gonna import our photos. We're gonna create a new sequence that is also 800 by 1000. We're gonna drag all four photos onto the timeline, again, in sequential order, because if you go like one, three, two, four, it's gonna just be like shaky and like you had like a seizure while you were taking multiple photos, losing the effect. One, two, three, four. What you're gonna do is once you have all four of these photos on the timeline, shrink each one down to about three frames. So what I like to do is go to the start, hit the right key three times, one, two, three, cut. Delete the excess. Ripple delete so that it's closer. One, two, three to the right, cut and repeat until you've done that with all four photos. You should have a relatively short timeline right now. It's short, it's clean, it's really simple. And here's where we're gonna get that boomerang 3D effect. We're gonna duplicate them to create that effect. However, we're not gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because then it's gonna cut to an end and cut back to the start, and you get like a jarring motion which loses the effect. I don't know how many times I'm telling you guys not to lose this effect, but just stay with me. What you're gonna do is follow this pattern. Picture one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this way you're going start to finish, but you're not doubling up on the four so that it holds in that spot for a second. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. And again, if you're gonna repeat that, you don't wanna double up on the one. So you're looking at one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you're gonna do that for a platform that naturally loops on its own like Instagram, you don't wanna end with the same frame that you started on. So like one, two, three, four, three, two. 
because when it starts over at the end, you'll start automatically back at one and you're gonna create that seamless loop and effect. It'll look super cool. If you follow those instructions, the only thing left to do is export it and bam, you've got some really cool 3D photos using only your DSLR that you already had. No need to purchase any other equipment. I'm not that kind of YouTuber who's like, hey, this is what we're doing, but you're gonna have to spend five grand. <laughs> Another thing to think about is, once you've kind of gotten the hang of this, try changing it up. Don't necessarily go left to right semicircular. Try on an angle or up and down. See what you can do, play with some cool angles. Maybe even introduce a little bit of movement if you want, some sort of like, confetti or something to make the photo just a little bit more dynamic. Once you've perfected it, play around with it. Make sure to tag me in it because I would love to see what you guys come up with. And most importantly, whether you've been following me since day one or this is the first video you've seen, hit that like button, comment down below. I'd love to get into a little conversation with you guys and make sure you're subscribed and I will catch you in the next video. I promise it's not going to be a month until the next one. Love ya!